Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Scientific Tube. Oops, it's a Delta 101 Tube from now on. I know it's been a long time since I have uploaded any video, so let's get started without further delay. Just a note, these videos are for flight simulation only, not to be used in real world aviation. So yes, let's get started. This is a beginning of a series of videos on aviation chart. Now if you are a newbie and happen not to know what they are, here it is for you. An aeronautical chart is a map designed to assist in navigation of aircraft. Using these charts and other tools, pilots are able to determine their position, safe altitude, best route to a destination, navigation aids along the way, alternative landing areas in case of in-flight emergency and other useful information such as radio frequency and airspace boundaries. There are charts for all land masses on earth and long distance chart for trans-oceanic levels like there are ground or taxi chart, standard instrument departure chart, en route chart, standard terminal arrival chart, instrumental approach chart or IAC, VFR charts and so on. Now what is IAC? Approach plates or more formally instrument approach procedure charts are the printed charts of instrument approach procedures that pilots use to fly instrument approaches during instrument flight rules or IFR operations. Each country maintains its own instrument approach procedures according to International Civil Aviation Organization or ICAO standards. On the right you can see what an instrument approach plate looks like. How to read this? Now we'll divide this entire chart into three sections. The top portion denoting number one, this section denoting two, and this section denoting three. Section one. You can see on the top left, this is the ICAO of the airport, which is OLBA, Rafik Hariri International Airport. On the right, it's written Beirut or Lebanon area. And the chart is for ILS runway 16. Now these are the frequencies which are mentioned on the chart which is that 8 is 120.6, Beirut approach 120.3, Hariri tower 118.9 and the ground 121.9. On the right what you see is called the MSA or the minimum sector altitude. Now what is that? Minimum sector altitude or MSA is the lowest altitude which may be used which will provide a minimum clearance of 1000 feet above all objects located in the area contained within a sector of a circle of 25 nautical mile radius centered on a radio navigational aid. Here in this case the radio navigational aid is the CAD VOR and this is the 25 nautical mile radius. There are two sectors which you can see. On the eastern part you cannot go below 11,000 feet and on here you cannot go below 5,000 feet as you can see. Now coming back to this part, this is the localizer which is denoted by the identifier IBB or India Bravo Bravo having a frequency of 110.1 the final approach course is 163 degree. The glide slope starts at 8 decimal 0 DME CAD or 8 nautical miles from CAD and has a final approach fix of 2000 feet. For ILS decision altitude or height, I'll be discussing this thing later on. The airport elevation is given here which is 85 feet and the runway elevation is 12 feet. Now let's talk in details about what this GS is. So in an ILS approach system there are two systems. One gives a horizontal guidance and another gives a vertical guidance. The horizontal guidance is given by something called a localizer while the vertical one is given by the glide slope. Now if you look at this image you can see that this thing, this arrow, that's the glide slope. It shows that the glide slope starts at the final approach fix which starts at 8 
nautical miles kilo alpha delta and 6.3 miles from India Bravo Bravo which is also marked here now going down the ILS on at a course of 163 degrees will reach a point called decision height now what is decision height that we will speak a bit later in this video all I can say now that this decision height is the point where you got to make a decision of whether to land or not and if you can land you continue the approach if not you just declare a missed approach and go around now if you go around and do a missed approach then the procedure is written in this segment now what is written here it's written that after you declare a missed approach turn right as soon as possible to intercept and follow the radial 250 of kilo alpha delta VR climbing to 2000 feet then as directed so how do these things go on so actually when the pilot declares a go around he says Beirut uh, Tower Jet Airways 123 going around and the tower says Jet Airways 123 Roger turn a right heading 270 degrees continue climb 4000 feet and then he transferred the traffic to the departure controller the departure controller then gives him radar vectors and brings him back on the final approach course then the plane again descends on the glide slope to the runway this is how things work next we have uh, the runway elevation details and the transition level which is flight level 150 and the transition altitude which is 13,000 feet now if you want to know what transition level and transition altitude is you can check my video which I'll leave a link in the description below or you can click on the right hand side of the screen to see the video now let's move on to section 2 of this approach plate before we begin with uh, the section 2 of this approach plate let me tell you what the approach procedure looks like so generally the approach procedure have five separate segments if you look at this image you'll get to understand what they are the first one this one is the arrival segment the IAF denotes the initial approach fix which denotes the beginning of the initial approach segment then comes the intermediate fix denoting the end of the initial approach fix and the beginning of the intermediate phase the final approach fix is where the glide slope begins and the aircraft begins its final descent to the runway now comes the point of decision altitude or decision height where you got to take the decision of whether to land or carry your missed approach procedure and this is denoted by MAPT or missed approach point this is the missed approach segment now coming back to this approach plate this is the approach that the aircraft will be flying so here on this approach the initial approach fix is Azalka which is 16 miles from this VOR which is named Kilo Alpha Delta having a frequency of 112.6 or it is at a distance of 14.3 miles from India Bravo Bravo which is the ILS DME having a frequency of 110.1 and a course of 163 as the aircraft reaches this point this is the final approach fix denoted by this symbol and it is at a distance of 8 miles from Kilo Alpha Delta. These things that you see here written 538, these are the high elevation points in this area. This area is high terrain and all the elevations are written down here so as to prevent any kind of mishaps. Now if now if the glide slope is out then the distance from the localizer there are altitude checkpoints given so at 6 miles from India Bravo Bravo the aircraft should be at this height again at 5 miles it should be at uh, 1637 feet 4 miles 1318 feet and so on these are the altitude checks that the pilot has to do while on descent just to be safe now moving on to the section 3 of this approach plate 
if an aircraft has a ground speed 120 knots with 3 degree glide slope it has to maintain this much of vertical speed on the right hand side we have the airport systems which is the precision approach path indicator is present and high intensity approach lighting system is present here is a demarcation of the missed approach in short that is if you carry a missed approach you need to turn right continue climb to 2000 feet or as directed by the ATC on a radial of 250 from kilo alpha delta VR with a frequency of 112 decimal 6 now comes the details about the decision height or decision altitude now what is this decision altitude or decision height it is a, actually a spe specified altitude or height in the precision approach or approach with vertical guidance at which a missed approach must be initiated if the required visual reference to continue the approach has not been established so looking back at this diagram if the aircraft is coming down here and reaches the decision height and at that point he is unable to have a visual of the runway then he got to carry out a missed approach that what that's what the definition says now the decision height for category 2 and category 3 approaches are invariably assessed by the reference to a radio altimeter and never a barometric altimeter so in case of category 2 and 3 approach it's always that we got to choose decision height which is given in this bracket and not a decision altitude which is written in bold which we get from the barometric altimeter therefore the minima can also can only be expressed as th and not da for approaches with dh of 200 feet or higher the radio altimeter reading would be unre unreliable due to the unevenness of the terrain therefore the barometric altimeter is always used and the minima can be expressed as th or da now just for the information if we are carrying out a non precision approach like a approach using a VOR or an NDB then the approach uses navigation system for course deviation but not provide glide path information so in that case we will have to fly the aircraft to minimum decision altitude or MDA now let's talk a bit about what this section is all about so this is the RVR or the visibility segment and C and D denotes the category of aircraft so here you can understand what it is so aircraft category basically are of A, B, C, D, E and H so V80 is the velocity of the aircraft at threshold which basically means that the aircraft is in landing configuration and if at landing configuration the velocity is or the IAS indicated airspeed is nine, less than 91 knots it's a category A aircraft from 91 to 120 it's a B and so on so for category C aircraft with full uh, landing lights system then we have an RVR of 1300 meters and for a D category D aircraft it's 1400 meters with approach line landing system out the RVR goes higher to 2100 meters and for a D category aircraft it's 2200 meters similarly for glide slope out if we are carrying out a localizer only approach we have the required RVR as you can see here now that's all we have in this uh, approach plate or IAC which is the instrumental approach chart hope you guys have understood what I have tried to convey to you if you guys have any doubt or didn't understand any any of my points feel free to leave a comment below and I'll definitely reply to your comment if you like the video smash the thumbs up button comment share and subscribe next video will be on text chart ground chart followed by SID chart and route chart star chart and VFR charts that concludes the video for today take care and see you very soon